What's up everybody, Chris Ponsalon here, back with another video. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna do things a little bit different. I am gonna show you how I made this beat. Tell him May won't ever fade like a pot of gold. It's better days, gotta tell the boss, man, send me home. Uh. But I am gonna give a little backstory before we get started. So very, very long story short, my cousin Marion Wright and I worked on an album last year and we did a campaign and the campaign was to drop a song a week from the album for 12 weeks. After the 12 weeks, we would release the album in full. Um, here are some of the covers that we used for that campaign. By the end of the campaign, I found this sample. And I just, I just had to sample it. And at the time, one of my favorite songs was Free Lunch by Isaiah Rashad. So there's a change up um, in the verse where it goes from sample to, to some chords. And I just had to incorporate that somehow within this beat. So just a quick side note before I get into the beat breakdown, I've learned a lot since I made this beat. Um, I mean, I made it over a year ago, so there are things that I did back then that I don't do now, and there are things that I didn't do then that I would do now, so um, I'm gonna touch on things that I would do now and things that I wouldn't do now, so here we go. I started off by time warping the sample. Then transpose it down, negative five semitones. used this kick. Um, as you can see, I didn't add any effects to the kick, so something I should have done is add this EQ. Should have rolled a little bit of the low end off to leave some room for the sub. And raised it here to give it a little bit more thump. I would have also added one knob for even more thump. So here's the kick without effects. And here's the kick with effects. Moving on to the snare. As you can see, I didn't add any effects to it. Um, so something I should have added was a little bit of reverb. And here's the drum pattern that I made. Onto the hi-hats. So if you don't know what Addictive Drums is, it's a VST and I think the creators recorded an actual drum set and manipulated it in certain ways and made a few presets. So if you're looking for realistic sounding drums from an actual drum set, I highly, highly recommend um, looking into getting this VST. It's relatively cheap and you just get a lot of really quality sounds. So this is the hi-hat pattern that I drew out. I also panned it to the right to leave some room for the second layer of hi-hats. Something that I did a lot back then was um, layering hi-hats and panning them left and right. So for the, the second layer that's panned to the left, I drew out the these 16th note hi-hats. So with the kick, snare, hi-hats, and sample, this is what everything sounds like so far. Next thing I added was this sub. So something I would add now would be this plugin called R-Bass and some distortion. And these two elements alone will help um, the bass sound a lot more prominent in laptop and iPhone speakers. And I know I say that a lot, but a lot of people listen to music on their laptop and iPhone speakers. So um, for me at least, if you can hear the sub in the laptop, then to me, the song sounds a lot louder and it sounds a lot more full. Um, this is what it sounds like without the effects. And this is what the sub sounds like with the effects. Before we move on, I wanna talk about um, throwing limiters on your master channel. Now, I don't know the exact science behind what limiters do, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of people in the comments telling me like, oh, this is like, you should be knowing, you should know what they do, blah, blah, blah. 
I don't know the exact science of what limiters do, but I do know that it uses some kind of compression to make your beats louder. So throwing a limiter on my master channel has helped my beats a lot. They make them a lot louder and it just overall sounds um, a lot more live. Now I usually use um, this limiter from Waves, but at the time I did not have Waves, so I just used the stock limiter with an Ableton. This is what the beat sounded like without a limiter. And this is what the beat sounded like with a limiter. Now before I move on showing how I made the change up that was inspired by Isaiah Rashad's free lunch, I just want to emphasize how important these transition layers are. I have this synth sweep layered with a reverse grunt, layered with a reverse crash, and this bass slide. Now these transitions, in my opinion, help the listener understand that something is changing in the beat, and when the switch up comes, it won't be, it won't come off as a surprise because they were kind of already anticipating that something was about to change or something was about to happen within the beat. If you're having a hard time um, going from one point of the song to the next, look into adding transitions, reverse crashes, bass slides, whatever, going from one part of the song to the next. So moving on to the switch up, I used this road sound and I made this chord progression. Then I added this bass line. I wanted to incorporate more of the sample within this part of the beat, um, but I didn't want to add melodies, so I looked for some vocals that I could use. Found these vocals from this part of the song. Now I didn't want to have deep sounding vocals within the song, I wanted to have those high pitched vocals. Um, so I transposed a sample up two octaves. I chopped up the vocals and used these parts. I EQ'd it. Added some reverb. Added some delay. Then I added some auto pan so it would travel from left to right. Now this is what the vocals sound like on top of the roads. Four bars leading up to the hook, I added this guitar sound. This synth choir. and these pizzicato strings. Moving on to the hook, I used this part of the sample. As far as the drums for the hook, I kept the kick the same, kept the hi-hats the same, and added a few more snares, just to give the track a little bit more energy for this part. And this is what the hook sounds like.
So as soon as I finished the beat, I sent it over to Marion, and I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but it went something like this. So after a few days, he came over, he had the hook already written, showed it to me, instantly fell in love with the song. Um, then he wrote two more verses. We recorded it here in my room and the song was finished. To this day, it's still one of my favorite songs that I've ever made and we've actually um, had the opportunity to perform it a few times. Tell him May won't ever fade like a pot of gold. It's better days, gotta tell the boss, man, send me home. Uh. Dipping off all for a brew in a pack of O's. Uh. That's gonna conclude this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to Rafi or Rafi, Chris, Celestial Strength, Alonzo Willis, and Crips for these comments. So I thought I'd make this video to show how far a beat can go, going from your bedroom to recording it, then to um, even possibly performing it. And I wanna start doing this in videos, just giving more context and giving backstories to beats, just cause like, I, I just like when producers um, give their story of how a song was made, rather than just showing the audience how they made it. Um, I just think it gives uh, the audience a little bit more of a connection to the music so I want to start doing that in future videos if you have any feedback for this video please leave it down in the comments below also if you have suggestions for future videos like tutorials people I should make beats for if you guys want to see more of these leave that down in the comments below I do reply to everybody unless it's spam thank you for paying attention please pay your producers and I'll see you guys in the next video Semi-automatic Finger on the trigger, trigger, trigger Run it for your sake Cause I ain't holding back I ain't holding back Cause I ain't holding back I ain't holding back Semi-automatic Finger on the trigger, trigger, trigger Run it for your sake Cause I ain't holding back I ain't holding back